Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain how you can install the ACES PBR validator tool and also how you can work with this tool to make sure that you are working into the safe ranges for the PBR workflow also while working in ACES. Now if PBR workflow is something new for you and don't completely understand how it works then what I recommend you to do is search for the PBR guides in particular the part 2 where it explains what exactly is the PBR workflow but in particular if you scroll down to this section for the metal roughness workflow explains how it works and explains also what you have to keep in mind once you start work with the albedo and this is exactly what we're going to do uh, adjust the values to make sure that the dark values and the white values they are not uh, outside this safe range which then has effects in how you work but that's uh, a topic for another time now if i go back to the substance painter you if you don't have this tool you can find the link in the description of this video so you can download for free on my art station and all you have to do is drag and drop into the library this is going to automatically recognize you're working with a filter and then all you have to do is import into the project or into the assets if you want to now, once you import it, you can find the tool here. It's going to be right next to the PBR validated tool. Now, the reason why we are not using this PBR validated tool comes by default with Substance Painter is because this tool, it's not set up to work with ACES. So for that reason, I created a tool that works with the ACES workflow. And this hopefully is going to help you to tweak and adjust your materials and, and make sure it's still inside the PBR safe range like we mentioned. So all you have to do is drag and drop into the material that you want to check. And obviously I set up this material to look really bad. And, and this is what you may get once you do with your material. Now, before we jump into what these colors mean, uh, if you check the uh, settings that you can see here on the right side, this allows you to check the two validation modes that we have, where we're going to see the color for the values for 30 RGB and actually if I go back to the PBR guide you can see the values that I'm making reference is the ones you can see here from 30 to 240 and then you have a more like strict range for 50 to 249 so all you have to do is click on these two options this is going to switch the validation modes depends what you want to do and then on top of that I also add an extra option which is not based on the PBR guides this is something that I just added because I think it's useful for you to check the roughness of the material and just making sure it's, you don't have two extreme values. So if you click the on button, you can see this change the color. This means that is correct. If it was wrong, it will look red. Uh, and this is a good introduction to what exactly the, the colors you see here mean. So the red color obviously is showing that something is really wrong. But then you also have some hints of green and purple. Now, green, I think it's quite obvious what it means. Green means that the values for these sections, they're completely fine. But then you also have this purple hint. Now, the reason why you have these different colors is because you can work with metals and non-metals. But you can also mix the two together. As a matter of fact, this is a, a steel painted. So we are going to see a surface which is a non-metal but we're also going to have ints of metal and to help to make the distinction between what exactly is a non-metal and what is a metal um, I'm using the red color for everything that is non-metal and then the purple color is for everything that is metal so that way when you look to the preview that you see on your screen this is going to hopefully help you to identify which areas and which adjustments you'll have to do so let me show you what you can do um, obviously there is different ways you can approach this uh, how you can adjust the materials to make sure they are within the safe ranges and if I for now hide the metal and scroll down to the base layer that I have um, you can see if I select this layer called lemon and if I select the column you can see that perhaps this is a little bit too bright so one way you can make adjustment is by adding a filter and into this filter you can bring a hue saturation and lightness filter and then if you press the shift key and you start to adjust in the lightness in this case going down you can see how by adjusting the material will slowly the preview starting going to a sort of green 
Now if I remove the PBR validator, and if you do a comparison before and after, maybe you don't see a big difference on your screen, but on mine you can see some difference. And this obviously, it's going to be more noticeable if you have a darker material or if you have a brighter material, it's going to be more perceptive of the changes. But the good news is this, this is now correct. You may have to, in some of the cases, you may have to adjust the saturation if you don't want something so saturated. But at least we know that the non-metal part of this material is, is fine. Now, what about the metal? Now, if I turn on the metal, you can see now the purple sections. And this is depends, again, how you're going to tweak it. But if I open the metal section here, and if I do the same thing, I can add a filter, adding a hue, saturation, and lightness. And in this case, I don't necessarily know if it's too bright or too dark, so I may go just a little bit crazy. Okay, so it needs to be a little bit lighter. And again, if I press Shift and start sliding up, you can see how I'm slowly adjusting this metal section. To a value that looks roughly good. And again, if we do the same comparison, if I remove this and we do it before and after, and even just hide the non-metal part, you can see that the, the metal perhaps was a little bit too dark so having this U saturation and lightness on top will help to, to get the correct values. This is one way you can do it. You also can do the same thing with levels. Um, there's different ways you can accomplish the same adjustments. But then that's that's the section about the, the albedo. Now the next thing you can do is also check the roughness. Uh, I have to be honest right from the start that this is not something you are going to find in the PBR guide. This was a suggestion that was given to me while I was testing this tool and I thought it would be interesting to implement it mostly as a visual guide to help you to understand if the values you have for the roughness they are close to the extreme side. So either you have something which is a perfect mirror or you have a surface which is completely matte. So if I create a fill layer and just go for the roughness what you want to try to avoid is something like this which is really close to having a perfect mirror. But again, I'm not saying it's wrong, just saying that personally, in my workflow, I wouldn't have a value like this because this is way too strong. And the same thing for the other side, where you go to a surface which is, is completely matte. Again, it's not wrong, but it's such an extreme value of maybe something you're not going to find in real life. So the goal of this roughness tool is just to help you to visually understand if the values that you have are not close to the extremes. So if you have something like this, which is a cyan color, it's completely fine, it's good to go. And basically that's it. That's how you work with the ACS PBR validator tool. I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, if you something you don't understand, or if you have any kind of suggestions, feel free to get in touch. I'll try my best to get back to you and if the suggestion is something which is practical and useful, I will implement it. This is just the first version. Hopefully it can be refined. Some functionalities can be implemented on the next couple of versions. And I also want to thank everyone involved, not only in test this tool before I release it, uh, but also to the ACES community that helped me to understand how ACES work and how I could create this tool to use in Substance Painter.